All right, guys, let's begin with the painting. Now let's start out by drawing out the eyes. I'm just going to use simple lines to kind of define the basic outline first, and then we're going to kind of go in with some big paint brushes and just fill in the space. Now that we've drawn the left eye, we can kind of duplicate this and, you know, mirror it to the right. Or we can just go ahead and draw out the right eye again. Um, it depends on whichever one that you prefer doing. Um, I personally am going to draw it out because I think, you know, the more realistic eyes would look less symmetrical. To duplicate it to the right side, you can click on Edit, Flip Horizontal, and then kind of put them together. And this works as well, but I think that we're going to just pretty much go ahead and draw it out because it will feel a lot better, I think. Now I'm just going to start adding some light definition of a nose and just some basic facial features, but we're not going to go into detail on this in this tutorial. Um, we're just simply going to focus only on the eyes, the eyebrows, and just this kind of like the skin and pupil area. That's about it. I'm drawing in the eyebrows because they can give a lot of character um, to our painting. And there's a certain technique to kind of make sure that everything is in the right place. And the reason I'm drawing very angular, it's because it's easier to kind of add in the light and the detail when drawing in angles and not just kind of using round lines. Um, it makes our drawing look less mushy. And, you know, if you really look at your face, it's nothing but a series of planes kind of laid out. And it is much easier to identify where things will go. Now I want to add in some color, so we're going to start with making our brush a nice big round brush with no uh, shape dynamics selected. And we're also going to turn on the dual brush again and kind of adjust it so that we have a nice kind of grainy feel to our brush. And with big strokes we're going to start painting in a nice dark brown skin tone where the arch of the brow is and around the eyelids. Now if you look at your own eyes in a mirror, notice how the top part of your eyes is normally in shadow. This is because of the crevice between your eye socket and your eyebrow arch kind of goes inside so that kind of brings a little bit of a shadow around that area. And also underneath the eyelids can have like this slight uh, darkness to it. And now that we have a darker brown color selected, let's start adding in a shadow closer to the nose bridge and between the eyes. Um, this is, of course, if you look in the mirror again, is slightly darker around this area. And also in the painting, it will really frame our eyeballs and our eye socket really well. You can make a new layer if you choose to, um, but for now I'm kind of still painting on the same one. I'm using big brush strokes to kind of blend everything in. Uh, we want to think of everything as a big cohesive image for now. Um, and I want you to think big when painting with big strokes because we don't want to kind of start out with detailing first because we want to look at it as a big picture and then bring in the focus. Now people often assume that the whiteness that is around the pupil in our eyes will automatically make our eyes look brighter on our face, but that isn't necessarily the case. If you look in the mirror, our eyeballs are actually the same saturation and brightness, just a different hue. We want to bring in the same warmth from the skin into our eyeballs, and then we'll slowly kind of take away and add in some more blues and maybe a little bit of a, you know, a different shade of kind of an egg white wash or something to the eyes. But for now, think of it as, you know, the bigger picture.
And now let's select a dark brown again and add in a little shadow to the arches of our eyebrow, like toward the outside. And now I must point out that I'm not directly painting these eyes from my head. I'm actually looking at reference when painting this. I'm using my own face. I have a mirror in front of me and I'm looking to see where all the shadow lines go and how the colors blend in together. You can either do that or even look up your own reference images on Freepik. They have many different kinds of eyes that you can also look at and use as a base for your own painting to practice with. And I'm looking at where the light is hitting my face at all times and accordingly with a nice big kind of textured brush I'm going to paint in the lights and the darks around my skin uh, depending on where the light is hitting. And now with an angled and textured brush, I'm going to start painting in the eyebrows. I'm going to use like very quick, swift lines and strokes to kind of lay these down. And we're going to do it very loosely. Let's not focus on too much detail, but just kind of putting in the basic shape right now. And now before I jump into working on the eyelashes and eyelid area, I'm just going to add in a little more shadow and some light detail around the face, just to kind of bring in some more definition. And by doing this, it also kind of really brings in a focal point uh, to our eyes. And now, making sure that your color window is always open, with an angled brush, let's select a very warm, saturated brown, and we're going to start defining in our lash area. We're going to make this part very strong and bold, because that's kind of going to be the, you know, the focal point of where our eyes kind of begin, and it kind of will be framing the entire eyeball area. Now let's do the same thing to the bottom of the eyes as well. Notice how the eyes are already looking pretty defined. I think the next step is now we're going to kind of start adding in the white part of our eyeballs. Now let's start by adding a little bit of shadow to our eyeball. Um, notice when you look at in the mirror, the top part of this usually is darker. Again, this is because of the shadow that is coming on from our eyebrow arch onto our eyes below. Notice that when I'm painting, how I make use of the eyedropper tool. The eyedropper tool is great for selecting colors around uh, your painting so that you can kind of stay fluid and stay in that motion of just continuously painting. So on my keyboard, I've actually set the Alt button and also on my Wacom pen, I've set, set the Alt button on the top um, button of my pen. 
and I do this as I'm painting I constantly keep selecting the colors around me and I can continuously keep that flow in my painting and I don't have to keep stopping to select the eyedropper tool on the toolbar this way I can just keep painting um, so you can do that you can set your alt button or any key that you prefer on your keyboard and your Wacom pen to the eyedropper tool and you can use this to basically select any color around your painting and now I'm adding in a bluish hue to the eyeballs again you know I kind of use that eyedropper tool to select um, the skin tone around my eyes and I kind of shifted the hue so it was a bluer tone and I'm gonna go in there and start slowly layering in Now I'm going to go ahead and start defining my eyebrows a little, just adding a few hairs here and there, just to give it more definition. Now let's add some shadow underneath your eye. I'm essentially just painting in the lower lid right now. Now this stage of painting is gonna be fairly uh, the same throughout. I'm just layering in slowly all the lights and shadows and you can use this on separate layers. You can paint on separate layers if you choose, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I kind of wanna just start adding in you know, lights in the corners of my eyes, a little more shadow, making the skin look a little more real, and, you know, just kind of bringing it all together as a whole before I really go in and start detailing the eye. Now let's add in a few strokes to the inside of the eye. When I look in the mirror, I kind of see that slight shadow um, at the tip. And I'm just gonna kind of paint in the nose here. I mean, this is just kind of where the nose would be. We're not really gonna go into detail on how to do the whole face. Um, I will eventually be giving a tutorial on just how to paint, digitally paint faces realistically in Photoshop. So we won't go into depth um, over here, but I just kind of wanna give you a definition or an idea of where everything is on the face. Um, of course, I think his nose might have to be a little longer actually, but it doesn't really matter for this tutorial. Now I'm just adding in some warmth to the same places where I kind of had already painted. Just a little bit of red, just to make that skin tone feel a little more natural for now. Now, if you press R on your keyboard, you can actually rotate your entire canvas around while you're painting. This is a really cool feature of Photoshop that has come quite recently um, in its versions. 
and it's really cool because sometimes you know I don't feel like actually physically going in and rotating my brush around so instead I just rotate the canvas that still keeps me and my, my momentum going when I'm painting And now I'm adding a little warmth to the corners of the eyes. You know, of course, if you look in the mirror, you can kind of see that little, um, those little blood capillaries in the corners. So I'm kind of adding that in, not too much detail. We just kind of want to give an indication of where things are. Now I want to start adding in some depth to the eyes. We can do this by really pushing the contrast. So I'm going to start making the dark colors even darker and more prominent. That's how I'm not really using my colors directly from the color window. I'm constantly color picking around the skin. This is so that I maintain the same color palette while I'm painting. You know, even when, for example, I want to kind of add in the shadows to the right eye, um, I basically selected the same dark color that was present there to kind of add in that little edge. I've given a slight indication of the pupils, if you notice. I haven't drawn them in directly. We're going to kind of ease in that process before kind of just, you know, laying down a circle right in the center. It'll look a little bit odd. We need it to feel organic as we're painting. Notice how I've lightly painted a outline around the pupil and now there's also a more defined circle in the center as well. So you can loosely see the eye, right? Let's start filling in the pupil. I'm going to just lightly add in a brown tinge to it. We're going to have brown eyes for our eye and we're just going to also kind of just keep it loose, um, you know, just give it the basic shape. If you look at your eyes in the mirror, you know, they kind of have this darkness around the top and then there's more light coming in from the bottom half of the pupil. Now I'm just going to clean it up a little and just make it more defined. Now I'm going to add a nice warm brown to the eye. Now let's make the corners a little more redder, a little more warmer and start really bringing some life into this painting. Now as I observe my eye, I think I've decided that the pupil is much too small. Um, my pupil actually fills up the entire eye as I look at it in the mirror. So let's go ahead and do that. You can press L on your keyboard or just select the lasso tool from the left, the freeform one, and kind of circle around the eye. And you can also rotate your screen around again by pressing R on your keyboard. And just really just select all around that pupil and then hitting Command or Control T on your keyboard, you can extend the eye out and make it bigger. Or you can even just do it the way I did. Um, once you have your lasso tool that is selected your pupil, just go to Edit and then, you know, Edit Transform and you can also do it from there. Now I've zoomed into my painting a bit more and I think I've decided that the pupils are still too small. I'm going to make them bigger.
Okay, I think that looks much better, and I'm much happier with the size now. I think I'm going to stick to this. Now I want to add the final touches of detail, but in this case I'm just going to start focusing only on doing it to the right eye. That way we won't do twice the work anymore. I wanted to kind of bring the entire eyes together as a set and kind of show you loosely how everything would look together cohesively. But I want to just focus on this for now because we're really going to get into the pupil area and kind of into the small details that we can also very easily replicate to the left side. So there's no need for me to show it in this tutorial. You can do as I do for the right eye and when you're doing it on your own, do it for the left eye as well. Now I'm going to kind of emphasize the dark ring around the pupil and also start bringing in some dark shadows to the upper lid. And now let's add some shadow to the bottom lid, but not too strong. We don't want to make it too heavily contrasted. I want to add in more of a warmth again to the upper lid. And let's again emphasize the eyebrows as well and just really define them. Now let's start adding some detail and definition to the eyebrow of the arch and don't forget to add in that little bit of highlight that you see. Now let's start adding in some detail to the eyelash area. I'm really going to zoom in here and start adding in those thin lashes one by one. You can press Z or Z on your keyboard and this will select the zoom feature or tool button and then you can kind of click on your mouse, left mouse click, and really zoom in. If you have a Wacom pen from your Cintiq, you can also actually hold on on the Alt button and while left clicking or you know top clicking from your pen, you can kind of zoom in and out very fast, almost like you're looking in at a camera. Now I'm going to use an angled brush and start adding in detail to the eyebrow area. I'm color picking the skin as well around the eyebrow and kind of drawing in those light lines in and then I'm also color picking the dark part of the actual eyebrow itself and adding in the strands over again. That way you kind of have this natural feel of hair kind of growing. Now I'm just adding in the final details, just, you know, making some parts of the eye that are in shadow a little darker. I'm emphasizing the highlights a little more, but we're not going to get into super detail again with this because, you know, we must remember that this is going to be used for concept art for video games or even concept art for film. So in that case, you don't want to get into too much realistic detail. You want to take it back just enough so that it doesn't look photoreal because then that would kind of defeat the whole purpose, right, of using this as a medium. We want to keep that painterly feel in there um, while also kind of, you know, keeping it nice and realistic and with just the right amount of detail. Now I'm just adding in lashes to the bottom half of the eye, just quick short strokes, nothing too much in detail. And now we're mostly done. I'm just going to quickly go and make another layer and kind of hide the left eye. We don't need to be distracted by it anymore. But just remember, all the stuff that I did for this eye, just replicate it onto the next one. 
Now we're going to add in a little more warmth to the eyes and I'm also going to really define those small little wrinkle creases that are on the corner of our eyes like when we're kind of squinting or when we're just even just looking at ourselves in the mirror. And of course let's not forget the final detail, the reflection. This really kind of takes our eye to the next level and gives it that really cool 3D feel and just brings in that depth. So there you have it. This is how you paint an eye for fantasy, video games, or illustrations, or for film. And now let's move on to the next part of the tutorial. I'm going to show you how to quickly paint very stylized eyes for television.